Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. Here's a three-part series on how you can play drum-like grooves on the piano over a bunch of genres and using all of these patterns we are going to definitely improve our hand independence and we'll also be covering a mode or a scale which we don't use that often we call it the Dorian scale or the Dorian mode if you will the Dorian is the second degree from the major scale just so you know so we'll start the lesson off with some basics of the scale or the mode the Dorian what chords you can get out of it and then the main goal in this three-part series is to figure out a set of patterns in the right hand over multiple genres alongside a rather simple left hand which is just going to be a pulse it's just going to be two three four one either you play an octave like this together or you toggle that octave one two like this so this would be a toggle pulse or you can go just a together pulse with basically the octave. So everything in the left hand is going to be fairly straightforward or very straightforward. It's just a simple pulse with a drone of the root. You're not even going to change that. It's all about the right hand in res with respect to the left hand. And that's how the hand independence will grow. To have one constant pulse in the left and then to have the groove created with a pattern in the right against the pulse in the left. This will form a very drum-like approach towards playing the piano. And I hope you stick around for the entire three-part series. You might lose track of the video, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. And also, so you'll have a booklet waiting for you on our Patreon along with MIDI files. This will be a PDF download of every single pattern in our entire three-part series. So for just $5 a month, inclusive of my handwritten notes, you'll get supplementary resources for this series along with a ton of other videos we've been doing on our YouTube channel. Hundreds are there and the Patreon page will definitely supplement all of these YouTube videos of ours. Right guys, let's get cracking. First of all, the essential theory required for this lesson we are going to pick a Dorian scale let's pick a Dorian so that will be that's pretty much like a major scale with a flat 3 and a normal 6 and a flat 7 so that will be a b flat 3 c d e f sharp normal G will be a flat 7 A. Another way to visualize this is with respect to the minor scale. So if you already know the natural minor, A minor, all the white notes, right, of the piano, the Dorian would be, it raises the 6. So raising of the 6 with respect to the natural minor, or the the or the 6th degree. Sarigama padha nisa sanida pamagarisa. Now coming to the chords, well, you, you'll have my notes available, but just to show you, the available triads would be A minor, which is the 1 minor, 2 minor, which is the B minor, 3 flat major, which is the C major, 3 flat because it is the flat 3. Roman numbers will include a flat because it's flat with respect to major, that's how it all works. So watch my video on Roman numerals, we leave a link in the description. A minor, 1 degree, B minor, 2nd minor, C major, 3rd flat major, 3 flat major, then you have 4 major, you can even add a dominant to that and make it 4 dominant, but that's the very Dorian movement, 4 major resolving back to A minor, okay, so 1 minor, 2 minor, 3 flat major, then you have your 4 major, then you have a 5 minor, okay, then we have a 6 diminished, that's F sharp diminished, then we have a 7 flat major, and then back to A minor. So I'm going to use pretty much all of these chords throughout the lesson and throughout the, the module or this series if you will. So practice those triads and incidentally A minor is no stranger of a scale it's the second mode or the second degree as we say from the G scale so G's G major scale second degree 
is a so a dorian so sharp g and then a minor right so that's the essential theory needed for this lesson also in the description we leave you a link to an exhaustive study on the dorian scale using a lot of my compositions and if you want to dive into the theory of modes how to build them from different perspectives again we leave you a link in the description so do check it out so coming to the first rhythm pattern first off let's maintain either this kind of a pulse in the bass which is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 toggling between the root and the octave with my pinky finger and my thumb okay another option could be just slam them both together okay and the chord or the chord progression is going to be a minor g major d major and then coming back to a minor and i'm doing it in an interesting way i'm playing it from the root position a minor dropping down to the root of g then descending further with an inversion of d major so ta ra ra la and then ending with a different inversion of a minor in this case the second inversion because it's just under the root position so let's do that uh, climb down so a minor d g major with a d on the top d major with a d on the top a minor a minor with a c on the top while the chords are a minor g major d major a minor but with that top note focused e d d c so the left hand is doing pulse 1 2 Four. Let's see what the right can do first. Let's first hit one, two, three, four. One, two. So I'm counting this as two bars of four. So the first bar will have minims, which is A minor, the new chord G, the new chord D, and A minor. There we go. start get that inversion get these inversions going and once you're done with that you can even change this starting position instead of playing a c e you can do e a c so e a c d g b d f sharp a c e a so that's the second inversion and then you journey downward so of a minor so you have three exercises just to practice inversions right now before we get to the rhythmic stuff tero 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 new one keep the same pulse and the first rhythm challenge for you would be to start triggering or getting to be acquainted with the off beats so so the first challenge now well we've done the on beats that was a nice challenge now we are going to go into the off beats one and two and three and four and one and so all these ands let's start off by dividing the beat by 2 2 and 3 and 4 and so maybe apart from the one the first chord one and two and three and four earlier what were we doing one and two and three one and the three what if we now do one and two and three and four one and two and three basically all the ands four and one and two and three and 
or at least the alternates and four and one and two and and don't miss the pulse of the left hand sometimes when we play this might end up happening you know and two you know and then you lose the sight of you lose the knowledge of the pulse to begin with so and then two and three and four one and two and three there we go one and two and three and four and one and two check that out off except the one one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three now even the one has gone off so just practice this idea of what we call as rhythmic anticipation and while you are at it you could also do rhythmic delay where you delay the onset of the chord by a subbeat later in time we anticipated now we are going to delay one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and so that the default landing was three now we are going to make that 3.5 or 3 and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four so basically explore the ands explore the subdivisions we are dividing the beat by two and just to perhaps give ourselves a, a taste of 16th notes you can do things like one and two and three and four and one and two and three one two and three and four and one and two and three and two and two and so let's do that again i'll try and break that down even more slowly one and two and three and four and one and two and three and five at the very end and two. so now you'll perhaps have to get into the mode of saying one e and a two e and a because we are going even more deeper into the beat right one and two and three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a four e you can do things like three e and a four e three e and a four e three e and a four e or you can do three e and a four e three e and a three e Which is more salsa. So, so slowly we get into that sixteenth note domain, and that's where the funk is. Okay, that's where the groove is, and that's where that. that's why people dance because of those sixteenth notes. Okay, so we've covered the. basic chords we've covered playing those chords on the off beat which are those eighth notes and then a sort of an intro to 16th notes so i want to now journey forward into a eighth note a funky eighth note groove i'll play it it's what you heard in the intro video i'll just play it again what i am doing here is of course it's still dorian chords but different than what i taught you earlier i'm not i'm doing something different so the the hit points 1 and 2 and 3 and 3 and is going to be a b minor so it's generally in this lecture series it's going to be a 3 or a 4 chord progression and if we are lucky maybe even a 2 chord progression but not 1 chord that's boring 1 and 2 and so 1 2 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so you see there's a lot of these and and hit points coming up 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and you can see the notation 2 and 3 and 4 and and look at the left hand it's an ever faithful pulse 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 very drum like in nature any drum groove will always have one thing which is consistent and then the logic would be to kind of add spice with an actual groovy pattern 1 and 2 and 3 and so let's first snap the rhythm 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 and 3 and and now bum bum you 
you can probably squeeze this groove into an improv as well alongside those chord movements stuff like that keep the pulse though okay i'm getting carried away with some of the other patterns which i'm also going to teach you so stay tuned so let me do that slightly slower for you 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 what you could also do to make things interesting first cycle you're doing that's a minor b minor c major b minor second cycle you can do a minor g major D major with an F sharp in the bottom, D major, and then come back to A minor for some spice. Ba ba C major, B minor, A minor, G major, D major, A minor. And I'm just keeping A in the bass. These are all slash chords, slash A, you could say. A B C B A G D A with the pattern. consistent in the left hand okay and before i sign off i'd like to do something in a more swung feel so all through so far we've been doing straight 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and what if we now make it something like 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 that also promotes the use of some broken chords so let me play you the swing groove and then teach you so what's going on here That's A minor, G major, D major, A minor. But instead of playing full chords, I'm doing, I'm breaking that down, and now one way to do broken chords would be to kind of transfer the weight between this side, which is just a C in this case, and the other two. But what I like to do. keep this held down and i'm playing this on an ep or an electric piano patch which sounds really nice when you sustain the the piano so so the pulse as always and the right hand let's just do this with one chord okay a minor now you could also do it straight but it doesn't sound so good i think this groove will be best when it's swung so one e and uh, you could do 16th note swing that ta 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 with all the chords so that will be the a minor swing g major swing d major swing a minor it, it repeats can explore other inversions starting with the second inversion of a or root position of a there we go in fact for flavor you can start off with different inversions and obviously if you are confident with the dorian chords you can explore them So in part 1 of this three part series we've done like a very basic set of chord movements to help you practice the inversions then we explored the off beats first off with the eighth notes then we moved to those 16th notes then we looked at a nice funky eighth note groove then we did some swing 
okay and to prepare you for the next part we are going to develop a lot of genres in the next part we are going to study some reggae some funk some glam rock some disco as we move forward we are going to get into some latin dance styles and bring in some salsa so stay tuned and in part 1 if you if you like to send me your recordings of what you've done feel free to leave us a, a note or tag us on our instagram profiles either jason zack or nathaniel school and we'll be happy i myself would be personally happy to listen to it and also share it on my stories and whatever else one can share things on right thanks a ton for watching again don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell because the next part might be forgotten and wait the next part is coming cheers